Normally, I have a pretty negative opinion of HD remakes. For the most part, they are released to mask the fact that the platform has a lack of quality titles. And of course, I'm looking at you, Nintendo. And despite the graphical upgrade, an HD remake can really showcase a game's age and destroy some of the fond memories that you had of the original. The fact of the matter is, is that not every game should, or can be, made into an HD remake. At best, they can be a fun way to kill time during a lull in game releases, and at the worst, they are an outdated train wreck dressed up in nicer graphics. So normally I wouldn't even give an HD remake a second glance, especially with all the major releases dropping this fall. But on August 26th, I went to GameStop for the midnight release of Metro Redux, and I couldn't wait to get home and start playing. Metro Redux bundles 2010's Metro 2033 with its sequel, 2013's Metro Last Light. Both games are survival horror first-person shooters with an emphasis on foreboding atmosphere and scarce resources. The games are based on the universe created by author Dmitry Kukovsky, yeah I know I'm fucking that up, who wrote Metro 2033 the book which tells the same story as the game. But if you have played the games before, you probably already know this, and unless you absolutely love the games, I wouldn't recommend getting the Redux version. Each game comes packaged with all of its DLC and introduces a number of new game modes including the Ranger mode, which significantly ramps up the difficulty. But ultimately, I don't see this as being worth the price, as the game is story-based and replayability is low. However, if you were like me, and hadn't played either of the games before, or read any of the books, then you need to buy Metro Redux right now. Both games, while not all that old, have aged very well, and are indistinguishable from current generation games. Tight, polished gameplay, beautiful immersive graphics, and a compelling story create a universe worth exploring. The Metro Universe tells the story of a post-apocalyptic nuclear wasteland where humanity has been forced to live underground in the Moscow subway system. Without giving any plot away, the game follows Artyom as he explores the tunnels and the world above, trying to gather information on the possible threat of the Dark Ones. The story is compelling and provocative and really makes you stop and think about the world your character finds himself in. Not only do you find yourself killing mutants and monsters, but you often find yourself fighting against your fellow human beings. And the underground ideological conflicts in the face of both mutants and a bleak poverty-stricken existence are a testament to the human need to pick fights. Little touches are thrown into the games to address daily life in the tunnels. Anytime you're in a human settlement, you're faced with starvation, greed, and addiction, and the humans of the tunnels can start to look like mutants you find on the surface. Both games have an excellent storyline which bring a universe to life. However, you will need to explore and find notes scattered throughout each level to fully bring the story to life. This can offer the incentive to explore, but can also be frustrating when you have missed some notes and want to know all the details. The addition of multiple endings in both games means that the more you put into the game, the more you get out of it. Gameplay-wise, both games are largely the same. Because this game takes place underground in dark tunnels, and you spend much of the game fighting humans, there's an emphasis put on stealth gameplay. Much like the awesome Far Cry 3, you can sneak around in the shadows to take out guards, and equip your weapons with silencers, as well as finding silent weapons for stealth kills. However, the game does not punish you for blowing your cover. There are no missions where stealth is required to beat the level, although there are a few missions where stealth is highly encouraged. And your chances do not significantly drop if your infiltration of an enemy stronghold becomes a firefight. You are given enough firepower and weapon customization to be able to take on any situation. Much of the difficulty comes from lack of resources, and in true survival horror fashion, you may find yourself resorting to stealth simply because you are completely out of ammo. Difficulty is added with the air filter resource. There are many areas in the game where you need to wear a gas mask to survive. And in order to stay alive in these hostile environments, you need to constantly put in fresh air filters. I found myself panicking much more over my lack of air filters than over my lack of ammo. But while I did have some close calls, I never found the air filter mechanic to be overly tedious or difficult. It is well balanced and adds a sense of urgency to a well-crafted survival horror game. While Metro Redux doesn't give you any incentive to replay the games, I couldn't put down my controller because I wanted to see what happened to Artyom next. The creepy atmosphere and well-crafted story, as well as getting two games for the price of one, are more than worth the price of admission. In short, if you have played these games before, unless you absolutely love them, you're probably okay skipping Metro Redux. But if you haven't played either game, Metro Redux is a brilliant 
and a must-play title. This is Frank from Brilliantly Epic, and I'll see you next time.